What's up guys, how's it going? Mike the Tech here. Welcome to another Unity tutorial. In this episode, we're going to discuss how to set up a collision between your player and the coin, make the coin disappear realistically, get some feedback from the coin, and then set up um, something to manage all of our variables so we can actually count how many coins we've collected. So, let's get, go ahead and get started on the very first of these and um, set up our collisions. So what we want to do is we want to click on our coin and um, we should already have a capsule collider on our coin. Um, if not, you can add one just by clicking on add component and typing capsule collider. But I believe once we create a capsule, that's created with it. Um, then we're just going to go to is trigger and set that up so it can be used as a physical trigger. And um, that's pretty much all we have to do for now on the coin. Um, what we need to jump to is setting up our actual collision in a script. So we're going to add a component and create a new script and call this collect <laughs> props if you got that joke I'm just going to call it collect I'm going to open up our C sharp script now this script is going to have a start and an update function but we don't need either of those what we're going to be using and I've gone ahead and pre-written this out just to make sure I don't um, mess this up. Let me copy and paste this. So we have a on trigger enter collider other and if other dot game object dot compare tag is equal to player then tell us that we've entered the um, object and we're going to replace this debug log to say um, something else and also add coins to our game but for now we just want to see if it's actually entered so basically what this does is it checks if um, the collider has been triggered and then passes on the results of um, who you collided with and then checks if the tag is equal to player that way if the coin hits the ground it's not going to detect that it hit something so let's go ahead and save this and hit play Let's go ahead and go to our coin. Let's see. Now, one thing we need to also do is in our collect script, we are checking if our tag is set to player. So on our first person controller, we want to change our tag to player. That way it can recognize that we're running into it. As without that tag, it won't recognize that we actually did anything. And if we run into it, um, it does update our UI on the bottom here to say entered. So now that we know that's working, we need to set up somewhere to actually uh, save our coins and um, all of our integers that we're going to use during the game. So we're going to make a new C sharp script. And we're going to call this game manager. And the cool thing about doing this is it's not going to look like a regular C sharp script. This is actually going to automatically put itself into the game and um, change itself to this cog icon instead of a C sharp icon. And um, it's going to, it's basically just a different type of class that we're using compared to our standard C sharp script classes. So um, basically, we still want to be using um, all of these, but we're going to get rid of. Uh, mono behavior, we don't need that, and we're going to get rid of our start and update functions. Right, so one thing we want to set up here is all of our public integers. So, um, the first one we're going to put in is, of course, we want to make it public so that all of our scripts can access it, and um, it's going to be a static um, uh, integer, which means it's a number, and we're going to name it coins, and it's going to see how many coins we have. And we're going to set that to zero and add a semicolon after. And that way it's going to save how many coins we have in um, the game. So let's go ahead and close that. And now we can start referencing it in our other script. So let's open up our collect script. And instead of using our debug log, we're actually going to, um, well, actually, we'll still use debug log, but we will add another line on top of this. 
to add to our coins. So let's type in game manager to reference the script we just made. And then we can already see that coins is referenced because we just made that one. We'll click that and we'll say um, plus equals one. And that should add one to our coins. Um, now for debug log, we, we don't have any way to read off our coins just yet. So we're going to make a way to do that here. So let's get rid of entered and actually type in game manager dot coins. So that'll give us the number and then we're going to type plus and in parentheses, we can start typing our actual text. So we could type space coins so far. All right. So that should say if we have like three coins, it'll say three coins so far. So let's go ahead and save this. Hit play. And now that I ran through, it's collecting coins. It's collecting them very quickly, um, but it is adding them to our game. So yeah, in the next video, we'll go ahead and show you how to destroy the coin. Um, or actually, I think we stopped some time. Now let's go ahead and do that. Now let's go to collect. And right after it um, sets up our debug log, we're going to type in destroy and in parentheses type game object. And we want to make sure to add our semicolon to the end of that as well. So now we run into it, it disappears, and it gives us one coin. So let's go ahead and test this with a few others. Let me switch to our move tool. I'll hit Control C to copy this one, Control V to paste it, um, and then I'll move it over here, and I'll do the same thing again, and I'll do the same thing again. Now let's hit play. And there are four coins here, and it should. Um, display to the console each time we collect one. Two coins so far, three so far, four so far. Great. So that works well. Alright, so in the next video we'll set up a real user interface and have it live displaying all of our um, variables that we set up for the game such as coins, lives, and whatever else we decide to add. Alright, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Peace.